Studying didn't come easily to you, though you tried hard. You worked about as hard as most people and got a pretty average result as well. You never tried much, but you still didn't do that bad. You didn't bother at all, and your grades reflected that. Everything in your class came easily to you. You worked hard for your excellent grades. Um, you never tried much, but you still didn't do that bad. Coasting by had become routine for you. Teachers had warned you that you wouldn't be able to do that forever, but you figured it was enough for now. You felt a lot of pressure to get higher grades than you did last year. You hoped to do just as well this year, but it wouldn't be a big deal if they dropped some. You were confident your grades would remain great. You had no plans on getting excellent scores this time around. Um, probably the last one, I guess. It wasn't something, it just wasn't something all that important to you. Yeah, you tried to sound engaged, but your mind had decided to go back to school despite the season. Lee knew you too well to be fooled. You sound so spacey, what's up? Just thinking about school. Lee groaned. Are you thinking about how we don't have to think about it? Because it's summer. That's what I'm doing. Um, looking forward to going back. Let's make a petition for more vacation time. It's so awful. I hate going. Come on, it's too scary not to think about it. Um. I guess I go to the third one. I get what you mean. Though, I guess school isn't all that bad. All the way bad. You can do some good things there. You can just do... You just, just do more than when school's out. Learning's a new, new thing to me. Cool. Dream is pretty great, though. This is an easy way to hang out with people not in the neighborhood. The cafeteria lunches at my school could be better than they had any right to be. There's nothing good about my school. It's the easiest way to hang out with people not in the neighborhood. That's definitely how I saw school. Like, schools, the classes suck, but when you get to hang out with friends, it's not that bad. If I didn't go to school, I'd never meet anybody new. No one really comes here. Uh-huh. Learning new things can be cool. Gym is pretty great though. Cafeteria lunches at school could be better than they had any right. I'm kind of confused on the third one. Gym is pretty great though. There's all sorts of sports stuff during gym. Oh yeah, it can be fun sometimes. I think this means cafeteria lunch is school, which I actually thought school lunches were good. I always heard people saying that their school lunches were bad, but I liked it. Lucky, mine's boring. Um, uh, but that was all. I mean, I agree with that sentiment. But when I think about classes in school, it makes me just not agree with that, you know? And that's pretty much everything that's good about school. Okay, point taken. Right. Now I decree the topic of school is officially closed. Let's talk about the summer first before we start plotting the rest of our lives. I've got some plans already. Ooh, tell me. I'm gonna visit my cousins. You chuckled, of course. What's something you want to do? The first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, I want to spend time with people. I've got some new art supplies, reading. I'm going to catch up on movie and TV. Probably I'll spend time at the beach. I don't want to do anything at all. It's a vacation. Um, I feel like I always have this mindset. And then I just end up doing stuff anyways. Not a lot, but yeah. Lee Googled. Aiming high, huh? Don't strain yourself. You lean back in your bed, settling in as you continued chatting with your friend. Even though it hadn't been that long since you saw her and you'd be seeing her soon, you found plenty to talk about. For one, the events of the day, you sat up straighter. I was with Cove and Derek today and we met a new kid. Like, at your neighborhood? Mm-hmm. His parents are visiting the family, so it sounds like he'll be around for a little while. I don't know how long. What was he like? Creepy, mean, weird, kind of interesting. Mean. He kept snapping when we all, uh, he kept snapping when all we were trying to do was talk to him. He just kept being rude to everyone. But especially Cove, it was awful. Mm. I don't think I want to meet him. You want a boy to stay away before even meeting him? That's an unexpected twist. <laughs> Your cousin was pretty popular with the boys who knew her. She seemed happy enough to have them around until they started to annoy her. Who are you to talk? Cove and Derek are always around. They're both boys, you know? That's true. That is not the same. They are not always around. I'm not the one who invites them. They just show up all on their own. You weren't able to say anything to that. Um. Hmm. That is not the same. Yeah, I say that is not the same. Lee laughed at your rejection of the idea, deeply amused. Even though she couldn't see, you shook your head at her grinning to yourself. There was, stopping, there was a stopping noise approaching the room, heralding the arrival of your irritated older sister. She flung the door open, a frown etched on her face. Come on. How long are you going to hog the phone? 
Glancing at your watch, you realize that your quick call had gone on much longer than anticipated. Elizabeth held out her hand, the other one lodged on her hip. She noticed the realization on your face. Time's up. Uh, gotta go, I'll see you soon, okay? With a sigh, you said your goodbye, Sully. Sorry for being long. I'm still using it. No, get out of my room. Eh, I mean, it's already late. I mean, we didn't plan for it to go on that long. Gotta go, I'll see you soon, okay? Bye! Okay, see you. Tell Elizabeth and your moms I said hi, too. You barely pressed the end call button when Elizabeth whisked the hands handset from your fingers and began dialing someone new as she strode out of the room. Your mom's voice called from downstairs. Hey, has anyone seen the phone? I'm using it! With that, she shut your door behind you. Silence was left in the way. That was one way to end your first day of summer break. Sometime later, it had gotten dark outside and you laid in bed wide awake. Your window had rattled all of a sudden, startling you bad badly. You flinched, staring over at it with furrowed brows. From your vantage point, you saw only the moon and an open sky. You were... Scared, confused, annoyed, curious. I say confused. What had caused that noise? Frowning, you sat up and moved closer to the window. You might as well find the reason behind this the, the disturbance. As you had a shock, your gaze was met by a pair of familiar ocean blue eyes. Cove? You squinted, yep, Cove was right outside your window. Your house is very angular and some parts stuck out further than others, so it theoretically wouldn't be hard to climb up around on still just because somebody could didn't mean you ex expected it to ever happen to his credit cove was doing fine his feet were braced he oh he climbed up i thought they were just saying it was something you could do doing fine his feet were braced against a section of the wall that jutted out and his arms flexing with the effort to keep him upright he easily lifted a hand and waved at you from the other side of the glass you hurriedly opened the window <laughs> cove climbed over the ledge releasing a breath once he was safely inside Hi, Z. What are you doing? What's up, Romeo? <laughs> I'm sure it's a surprise, but you're always welcome here. Is everything okay? What happened? You're lucky I didn't start screaming. It's amazing my dreams have come true. Um, this is hard. I definitely go, wouldn't go with the what's up, Romeo. Too direct. Is everything okay? What happened? I wouldn't assume something's wrong. Get into the screaming. I, d I think I'd go with just what are you doing? Visiting? Why? I'm I need to talk to you and couldn't wait until tomorrow. If I rang the doorbell, I know your moms would have answered and they'd just make me go home. I didn't really want to explain why I was coming over anyway. I don't want to talk about it. Well, besides with you, I mean, but that's why I did that. As unexpected as this was, you were touched, Cove felt like he could tell you what was wrong. I might have tried calling or something, except my dad was on the phone. Cove suddenly looked very cross. Dad, he was talking to my mom, still is probably. You raised your eyebrow. Cove had eavesdropped on his parents' phone conversation. You shouldn't have done that, eavesdropping's bad. I would have done that too. You didn't comment on him eavesdropping. Yeah, I probably wouldn't comment on that. There were other things to talk about. Are you gonna stay with your mom for a while again? Every year, Cove was sent off to live with his mom for a few weeks. When it happened, varied. Sometimes he would go during winter break, but usually he went during summer. Even though it was hard news when you found out he was leaving and you missed seeing him those weeks, you understood. To your surprise, however, he shook his head. That's what I thought too, but no, that's not what they were saying. My dad asked my mom not to have me leave this year. He said she could come stay with us here. He waited for him to continue. He didn't. The conversation abruptly dropped off. You couldn't help but stare at Cove. There was a complete, complicated mix of expressions on his face. What did your mom say? She told him she'd come. I know she'd co she's coming soon, before school starts. Oh. You had heard Cove talk about his mom a lot of years. He'd tell you about past memories or what happened while he was visiting her. Still, it was one thing to hear about someone and another to actually meet them very soon. You were going to see Cove's mom in person. You were taken back by the news, so you could only imagine how Cove felt. You looked over at him. He was pacing across your room, his features pained with dread. Before they, before they barely stay in the same room long enough to have lunch. Now we're all going to be to be all together again, the three of us, after all this time, just for a few weeks. I know I should probably be happy they can talk to each other now. I'm still not. I'm just confused and freaked out, and now I really feel bad for feeling this way. Z, so his fist tightened and his eyes became misty. 
I shouldn't keep getting like this. It's been a long time already, and I'm not a little kid. Though, he wouldn't meet your eyes. You knew he was waiting for you to say something. There's nothing wrong with feeling bad. This is hard to deal with. We can deal with this. I'm sorry, Cove. You know I'm here for you. Yeah, that's a lot. He didn't know what to say. Um... I'm gonna go with the first one. The tense line of Coast Shoulders East. Thanks, that makes me feel a little better. Like, I'm not freaking out for no reason. A momentary silence fell over the two of you. You marveled at how the day started. You had woken up eager for summer vacation, but now things seem so crazy. The mini debacle with Mr. Holden's gift, the newest addition to the neighborhood being so rude, and as if all that was enough, now Cove's mom would be living with Cove and his dad again. Your whole life was kind of like that. It seemed complicated and hard and different. Why couldn't things just get better with time? See? The sound of your name said quietly pulled you from your thoughts. Cove gazed at you concerned. Yeah, I'm okay. You meant it. Yeah, I'm okay. You didn't mean it. No, I'm not. I don't know. Who, me? I'm more worried about you. Wow, things are kind of bad for everyone, huh? Who, me? I'm more worried about you. You don't have to forget about yourself for me. I want to listen to you, too. Cove grinned reassuringly. It was s small and delicate, but you knew it was genuine. He had come here conflicted and upset, only to end up worrying about you. He really was a great friend. You know, I I think I don't want to talk to any more about this. He looked away, his lips thinning into a line, and rubbed at his arms. But I kind of don't want to go back home, either. Could I stay a little longer just doing something else? He appeared equal parts hopeful and vulnerable. How could you possibly turn him away? You can stay tonight, but we shouldn't make a habit of this. I've got a flashlight and some cards. Are you in? Of course, you can always stay here, Cove. Um, I've got a flashlight and some cards. Are you in? He tilted your head, waiting patiently for his answer. Cove perked up at your response, a smile appearing on his face. He immediately took a seat on your bed, not afraid to get comfortable in your room. He felt a little better at the sight. Somehow, you still had a lot of worries, but you were glad he was here. And not just tonight. You were glad he came into your life in the first place. That was a change you'd never want to undo. Who would have that? Who would have thought that code would mean so much to you? You certainly had it in the beginning. You had your kept your distance, and so had he. Now you consider him to be one of your closest friends. <laughs> you joined Cove on your bed, taking a seat across from him. He smiled at you again, but you could tell this time it was half-hearted. He was still easy to read, though. He didn't want to talk about his mom and dad. He must be thinking about what happened and what's about to happen. Where did it go? Huh. I don't have it nearby. I guess I'll just grab. You smiled gently at him. You put a hand on his shoulder. You pat his back. You hugged him. You took his hand in yours. You nudged him with your foot. Mm -hmm. Let's see. See, the thing is, I feel like I've never had a person really this close to me, ever. Like, the people I've been closest to, I met them in, like, middle school or even high school. But, like, I never had someone I'd think I was friends with ever that long. Because, like, I'm a person, my friends know this, I, like, I don't like hugs. But I feel like really in this moment, he could use one. And I feel like I'd be fine with it. I'll pat his back. <laughs> you stretch your short arms out and softly pat his back. It wasn't much, but you hope the contact helped it even a little. Cove blinked, startled, before his expression softened into something more natural. Conversation was stilted and broken, often by silence at first. Then both of you were able to get into your usual candor. As your secret hangout session stretched on, you thought that you truly wanted to keep having moments like this with him. You hoped a day would never come with when life decided that the two of you would have to part ways, and you knew Cove felt the same. Uh. <laughs> you opened your tired eyes, groaning as they adjusted to the bright light that was streaming through your window and warming your peachy skin. Did he stay the night? I'm not sure. With a loud yawn, you rolled away from the sunlight and blinked a couple of times, clearing the sleep from your eyes before... Realizing with a start that it was actually morning. You couldn't remember even falling asleep. Kovad crept through your window during the night, and the two of you spent some time together, 
spend time together trying not to wake your parents. You must have fallen asleep while you were hanging out, but couldn't put a finger on exactly when. You wonder how late Kova stayed before heading home. Ah, he went home before I woke up, maybe, or I don't know. You rubbed your face and yawned again, contemplating whether you should get out of bed and get ready for the day. I say so you up for a little while longer, until your gaze landed on an instantly recognizable mop of pale green hair, and you bolted up. You stay, <laughs> and you bolted upright and gasped in surprise. He never left. He was still there in the morning.